Okay, so we're going to go through June 2013, um, the F325 paper. Um, starts off at the top with a definition for lattice entropy. Uh, lattice entropy, as you know, um, is the entropy change uh, that uh, accompanies the formation of one mole of an ionic, ionic compound from its gaseous ions. Um, so, box out the definition. Now we need to do our exciting one half cycle. So, let's have a look. We've got, we've got to fill in the boxes. Calcium plus, plus oxygen going, and one electron. This is going to be the second ionisation energy of calcium to give me calcium two plus in the gaseous state, plus oxygen gas. We've got A into him plus two electrons. This is my first electron affinity of oxygen. This is going to be the second electron affinity of oxygen to give me my gaseous ions. And then that, of course, is my lattice entropy going down there. Carrying on from that, um, the next question is going to ask me to define, um, it's going to ask me for the entropy changes for step A. Step A is, of course, this one. That is the entropy formation of calcium oxide. Step C um, is this one. I've got a half oxygen gas becoming oxygen atom. That is the atomization energy of oxygen. And finally, step G. This one here, which I've just said, is going to be the second electron affinity of oxygen. Um, the last thing to be, if you calculate it all out, it's nice box standard um, all half a cycle. You should come to minus 3,454 kilojoules per mole. Right, we then got to describe and explain the factors that affect the values of atomy. First thing, really important, always talk about ions. Ions are really, really important. Don't talk about Okay, so first of all, um, we can say ionic uh, radius um, is one factor. Uh, smaller ions have higher charge density. Uh, therefore, they attract each other. Strongly, but therefore more exothermic lattice entropy. The other factor, of course, is ionic charge. Um, we know we can go for the same argument the higher the charge on the iron, the more they will attract each other, and the more the exothermic lattice entropy. So, very similar argument. Okay, we've now got a nice rates one. Uh, first of all, what's meant by the half-life of a reaction um, is the first question. Um, that's the time taken for the concentration reaction to reduce to half its value. Um, confirm the order of reaction, uh, with to order of reaction uh, with respect to C6H5N2Cl. Okay, so I've drawn on the graph. I've gone from 5 to 2.5 there, and then 2.5 to that's 1.5. There. The distance from there to there, so to go from 5 to 2.5 is 54 seconds, and then to go from 2.5 to 1.5, where I halved it again, is another 54 seconds. Therefore, I've got two consistent half lives, and it therefore is first order. Uh, what will be the effect of doubling the concentration um, on the half life? Nothing at all. The half life is going to be the same. You can see, you know, as I change concentration, it doesn't matter, does it? The half life is always the same. The time taken for half the concentration, for, well, for the concentration reaction to, to change uh, by half, is always the same. Constant half life. Okay, so I'm now going to calculate uh, the rate at 40 seconds. So I've got my tangent there. Drive going along there, mark it on the graph. Um, try and get your, your tangent to hit. The axis makes a lot easier. That's going to be 5.1, that's 122. So I take that 5.1 divided by 122, that comes to 0.0418, and of course your units are moles per decimal per second. Uh, right, so once we found the rate, um, we found the rate is equal to 0.0418 moles per decimal cube per second. 
go back to the rate equation that they gave us, uh, the rate equals K times that concentration. Read off this concentration from the graph um, at the time that we took this rate, and we found that to be 3.45 moles per decimeter cube. So we can rearrange this equation uh, quite easily to find K. K is going to equal the rate over that concentration, which is going to be 0.4418 divided by 3.45 moles per decimeter cubed. cheeky question at the end. The order of this reaction with respect to water is effectively zero. Why? Well, if we go back to the equation, um, the whole reaction is done in uh, water. So if we go into this, this is all in aqueous solution. So we're going to have loads of water present. It is in excess. So the reason is, is because water is in excess. Right, on to question three. Um, equilibrium question, uh, hydrocarbon. Uh, I think we had to give a quite a simple uh, equation there, nothing too difficult. Um, they told me that I've mixed hydrogen and iodine together and I don't have any hydrogen iodide at the moment. And I need to calculate, at equilibrium the mixture contains 3.00 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of hydrogen. So um, I need to work out my equilibrium moles. Well, going from there to there, if you do uh, 2.00 times 10 to minus 3 minus 3.00 times 10 to minus 4. That comes to a difference of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. So obviously I'm going to use, lose the same number of moles of iodine because it's a 1 to 1 reaction. So 4 times 10 to minus 3 minus 1.7 times 10 to minus 3 gives you 2.3 times 10 to minus 3. Now key thing noted, Okay. Um, I've got two moles, so if I lose 1.7 then I gain 2 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3, uh, which is going to be 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Then all you need to do is plug it into Kc. So Kc, concentration of hydrogen iodide, concentration of hydrogen. The atomic of the volume is one decimeter cube, so I don't need to worry about converting it into concentrations, because all I'm going to divide, I'll just divide everything by one, give you the same answer. But also, if you notice, um, it's squared up here, and these two times, so it's, we're going to find this unitless. Uh, we don't have any units, and then we don't need to worry about finding the concentration. So we plug these numbers in, so it's going to be 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3, and that boy is squared, divided by 3 times 10 to the minus 4 times by 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 there. And if you put up what I would do, I would work this out and work this out, and then do, um, so you have another fraction and then do it, um, you should get 16.8. Please make sure you know how to do that with calculator. Loads of people lose marks because they stuck it up at this point, and as we say, there are no units because the units all cancel out at this point. There. So a nice little table for us to fill out now. So the chemist now uses three times ten to the minus three moles of hydrogen instead of two times ten to the minus two of hydrogen. Predict whether how the amounts will change by putting some ticks in. Well, if I've added more, if you think about it, if I've added more of this equilibrium, sorry, initially, the equilibrium is going to be shifted this way. But it's not going to use up all that extra, so I was coming out with a greater amount of hydrogen. But if I increase that, the equilibrium shifts this side, it uses up the iodine, so it'll be smaller than that. And if the equilibrium is being pushed to the right hand side, I'm going to end up with more hydrogen iodide as well. Uh, chemists heat the mixture at a constant pressure. Will what happen to Kc? Will it be greater, smaller, or the same? 
Well, remember, Kc is going to be Hi squared over H2I2. It is an exothermic reaction, so that means that it's going to shift to the left-hand side through Le Chatelier's principle. That means that these will, terms will get bigger and that term will get smaller. Therefore, Kc will be smaller because the equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side to produce more of the reactants. Um, and then finally, the chemist increases the pressure of the mixture. Um, what will happen to Kc? Kc will stay the same. Kc is always the same, it doesn't matter. Kc only changes with temperature. So the key thing, Kc will be the same because it is not affected by pressure. 